Marks and Spencers by Group 7. Mark and Spencer's success has come from a number of avenues, including the meals ready to eat, the quality clothing, but the secret really lies internally. With strong belief in employee well-being and supplier relations, they make their face of their company happy to pass on their service. So what type of strategy are they pursuing? Their simplicity starts from the inception. Simple pricing, products and service, long relationships with both buyers and suppliers. Suppliers prosper from highest volumes of their products and M&S prospers from close working relationships and the ability to shift in the market depending on demand. Mark and Spencer's was the first to implement the cold chain distribution in the UK and because of this their fresh and ready to go meals took off with huge success. With a justifiable price point, M&S are making good profits without worrying about slashing prices to gain market shares. So why have they had difficulties replicating success in Canada and France? Well, M&S tried to figure they could inject their ideas into the stores into these countries and not get any cultural pushback. Uh, that was not the case. A successful store in, the, in one region doesn't always translate into profits. Customers in France and Canada didn't necessarily find the new stores beneficial to shop at. M&S merchandise, specifically clothing, was not seen as up to the fashionista's taste in these areas. Because the merchandise wasn't perceived as better quality or more fashionable for the most part, and the pricing wasn't special, the incentive to buy was low. Originally, M&S used the idea to export to Canada locations as a positive to their suppliers and core brand. However, they soon realized the tariffs from the UK to Canada was cutting into their profits too much. And between these, that's why success was not taking off in Canada and France. When looking at Mark and Spencer's acquisitions, we see both positive and negatives. As far as Brook Brothers go, we can see that it works well with the high quality that gets respectable return that attracts the kind of customer any business would be thrilled with, including celebrities, even presidents, and that never really hurts. Also, between Mark and Spencer's and Brooke Brothers, their corporate strategy aligns well. M&S also gained help getting into the Far East market, Japan specifically. Also gained a large footprint of food courts within the U.S. that put them in a strategic position to get their product and branding to U.S. customers. As far as Kings go, first Kings needs cold chain distribution in order to bring their fresh food meals into play. Next, they're going to have trouble getting into their U.S. consumer on board with the brand-specific products. And with this said, M&S needs to contribute a large amount of capital on top of this acquisition to become when looking at this from a SWAT perspective, their strengths need to be funded to take off. Their weaknesses are a lack of brand loyal customers. Their opportunities might be there in the U.S., but they have the Atlantic Ocean making it more difficult, and the threat of other domestic stores is imminent. King's does have a few silver linings that include shared strategy of quality and shared premium on products, but I don't think this is going to be enough to cut it. Now, do these acquisitions make sense? In the case of Brooks Brothers, we'd say yes. Quality and price point, increased potential for U.S. food market, new partnership with Far East industry, and high-profile customer base, what could go wrong? King's Supermarket, on the other hand, not so much. Maybe, but not so much. It's in a lar large, expensive infrastructure into the fresh food market, Customers are not as brand loyal in the U.S. Uh, there's more industry competition and there's less differentiation. Alternatively, we would suggest to purchase Brook Brothers. Use the Brook Brothers names to expand global fashion in France and Canada. However, we wouldn't suggest purchasing King's Market. In order to get the brand out to the U.S. market, we would first suggest putting the products into stores and allowing other brick-and-mortar locations 
to get the brand image out there. Lastly, we'd gain market by staying simple and develop a fresh food segment as, a, as the brand becomes established.